All right, hey class. I'm just gonna do a quick overview of how to set up some custom graphics uh, that we're gonna cut out in heat transfer vinyl. Uh, this is for the wearable tech project. And so as you can see here in the bottom right hand corner, this is the, the tie that I made. I uh, made use that uh, Northville STEM logo that we created. Uh, I've got my little NeoPixel shown in there that lights up, uh, which I can obviously show you in class. Uh, but your goal right now is to create that design that will allow for uh, the pixels to be sewn in at some point. And again, it'll be kind of a custom graphic based on what you want your design to look like. All right, so uh, with that said, the, the program we're gonna use here is called Inkscape and it'll allow us to create some vector graphics. Uh, this is the same program that I like to use um, when I'm creating laser cutter files. So it's gonna be kind of a similar process if you've taken a class that I've used, that we've used the laser cutter for. Uh, but anyways, uh, find this on your desktop. Uh, if you're using a school computer, if you're using a computer at home, uh, you can actually download Inkscape for free. That's another uh, great part of Inkscape. And so uh, go ahead and find that. And when you double click on it, it should bring you, I already had it opened up, uh, to this page. And so uh, the first thing I like to do is actually set up my uh, document to be, first off, in inches. And so um, just because that's what we're kind of used to using. Also, the page itself, uh, I usually use that based on the print size I have available. And so for ours, ours is actually uh, 12 by, sorry, 10 by 12 inch uh, sheets that we can print on. So I'm going to make sure that everything is sized up properly so that I know I'm not going to, you know, create something that's too big for what's what we actually have available. Okay, so once that's kind of set up, my page is now set to 10 by 12. Uh, if I want to uh, zoom in, I have to hold down control while I hit the scroll wheel. That allow me to zoom in. If you want to pan, I'm holding down the scroll wheel and uh, panning around. All right. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some sort of an image that I'm going to use as a reference. So uh, this you can actually do with a general Google search if you want to use that as a starting point. Uh, maybe you can add some of your own custom texts and things like that if that's the, the route you want to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, import an image. So uh, I'm going to go back and go and find my, my Northville STEM logo that we've been using. Uh, so I think I have mine saved here. Like I said, you can download it. Uh, black and white actually works really well because we're either going to cut it and it's going to be showing something in the background or uh, it'll be whatever the color is. So for the most part, you want to stick with things that are going to be two colors. Um, to, for the sake of this example, though, I will go ahead and bring in a multicolored one. Okay, we'll use embed, it'll be from file, hit OK. Right, so right now, that's kind of the size I have to work with. All right, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to trace bitmap. Okay, so under path, I'm going to trace bitmap. And the idea of tracing a bitmap is it's going to create points that uh, essentially your CNC machine, so in this case, the Cricut cutter, uh, we'll be able to follow these kind of like connect the dots. All right, so I've got my image selected here and I'm gonna use this option that says brightness steps and I'll do a few different scans um, and I'll do a live preview here. Okay, so the other way you can do this is based on color. So it'll kind of find each color and create a different scan of this. Um, I'm gonna see how well the brightness steps does first. So go ahead and hit okay. And you'll see here it's kind of created several layers and if I kind of pull this apart, I'm going to actually delete the um, image that I brought in. And now I have, uh, let me show you this first thing. here. If I double click on it, you'll see I've got a bunch of little points now. And each of these points is going to be essentially how the CNC machine knows how to cut or the laser cutter knows how to follow around the, the image. Okay. And now the way I chose this, I did escape here to get out. I actually picked it so that it'll be several different uh, layers that I can choose from. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of click and choose which one I think might work best for what I wanted to do. Um, so in my case, I, I just wanted two different kind of layers. Uh, so everything will get cut out from inside here. So I think I'm liking this layer um, I'm gonna work with. Okay, so if I double click on this now, I can see that these are kind of the points that it would fall along. So you really wanna have a nice, good image to start off with. Uh, or else it's going to be really sloppy. You have to do a lot more post-processing work afterwards. 
Uh, just a quick thing to make note of here is that all these points, I can actually click and drag and so if something's not, you know, lining up properly, I can click it out and make it, you know, kind of where, where I want it to be. Uh, for my case, though, it actually worked out pretty well since I was using a pretty high quality image. All right, so I will leave that for now, X out of this box. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is kind of make sure I'm tr it's tracing the right um, portion. So I want this to be a pure outline. And so the next step, I'm gonna come over here and go ahead and do fill and stroke. Okay, so under object, fill and stroke, and it should open up a little menu on the side here. And so uh, I don't want it to be filled. So I'm going to actually X out of that. No paint. It might go totally white on you, but come over here to stroke paint. And a uh, common way of doing this is making it all red. So it kind of shows that red is kind of for cutting. So you can kind of see here clearly what's going to get cut out um, when I put this to the cricket. All right. So at this point, it's actually. I could technically send this in right now, but the next really important thing is to keep track of your sizing. All right. So right now, this whole thing is, if I see up on the top here, it's going to be 6.375 inches wide and a little over three inches tall. Okay. So uh, at this point, it's going to be pretty big, depends on what you want to do. Uh, the way I like to set mine up was based on the size of my NeoPixel. So my NeoPixel, I wanted mine to fit right in here. And so uh, the way I did this, I'm actually going to double check my measurements of the NeoPixel. And so if I come back over to the design brief, uh, I see here the NeoPixel is 0.5 inches in diameter. All right. So in my case, I wanted this circle right here to be 0.5 inches. All right. So in order to do that, I'm going to kind of keep track of a couple things here. So first off, uh, let me just double click on this. So I want to just double and see kind of how big this current circle is. So this is going to require a little bit of math. Uh, before I do this, I'm actually going to break this up. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, uh, sorry path, and I'm going to say uh, break apart. I believe that that's what I want to do. Yep. And so now if I see here, each of, each individual section is split up. I'll show you in a second how to combine that again. But I wanted to do this so I can see how big is this circle right now. Okay, so currently, this, currently this circle looks like it's about 8.2, give or take, eight, let's go with 8.27, this one, 8.27 inches wide, right? And I wanted it to be 0.5. So again, here's where uh, I've got to do a little bit of math. I'll take out my calculator. All right, so I'm seeing that if it's 8.27, I want it to be actually um, uh, 0.5, okay? So I'll say 0.5 divided by 0.827. Okay, so I need to scale my entire thing down by about 0.6, okay, give or take. And I'm gonna go and just leave that at 0.6 to keep this simple. Okay, so meaning that in my final, I wanna keep this number in mind, 0.6. I'm gonna multiply my total. All right, so before I do this, I want to keep all my other proportions similar. I'm going to highlight everything, just click and drag over everything. And we'll come back over here and combine everything again. Okay. So now I'm seeing my overall size 6.375. Let's go ahead and change this number. So I'm going to go and use my scaling factor from before, this 0.60. I'll multiply that by the size here. So 6.375, that gives me 3.854. Let's go ahead and keep it at that. Okay, so now if I change this number to 3.854, I'll scale my entire project down. And now uh, I'll kind of just double check that. If I break apart again, I break apart all my parts, and I just checked this, I see that it's exactly at 0.5 inches, which is what I wanted so that my NeoPixel will fit right in there. Okay, so that's just one example that really obviously depends on what you wanna make. Um, but at this point, I'll go ahead and combine everything again. Uh, make sure it's all one piece. Okay. 
And so now uh, this would be the file I would send to the Cricut or the laser cutter. Um, it doesn't automatically save. So make sure you hit save wherever you save it to. Uh, don't forget where it is. Uh, that's the file that you should submit into Schoology or if you're uh, potentially email it to me as well as an option. Okay, that should be it. There's your tutorial on creating a vector file um, to be sent to either the Cricut machine or the laser.